Hey, Navjal Nighthawks, this is Module 5, Lesson 12 and 13. So 12 and 13 are really similar, so we are going to combine the two. Um, so Lesson 12 says, I will be able to reason using benchmarks to compare two fractions on a number line. So what that means is we're going to use benchmarks, that, and our benchmarks on a number line are 0, 1 half, and 1. So we're going to use those benchmarks to help us compare fractions and kind of use what we know about fractions to help us reason. Um, we'll get to a point where we're going to make equivalent fractions to compare, but we're not there yet. We're just going to use our reasoning skills to help us compare on a number line. Okay. So what this is going to look like. So here we have our number line. If you notice, we have a zero, one half, and one. And we're going to use those three benchmarks to help us plot these fractions on the number line. So what that's going to look like is we're going to look at one third. So one third, we know that we would need three thirds to make one whole. So we know this is going to be less than one, but we have more than zero thirds. So we know that it's more than zero. So we need to think, well, is it less than or more than one half? Well, think of what would be half of three. It's not going to be even. It's going to be a decimal number. So three, if I were to chop that in half, would be 1.5 or one and one half um, to give us half of three. So because I have one, that's going to be less than one half. Um, and we'll get to a point, so this is kind of, I don't want to say hard, but if you don't understand your halves and your ones, um, then it'll be kind of tricky, kind of tricky. So we'll get to a point where we want to make common denominators, like I mentioned, but we're just going to use that, um, those benchmarks of half and one. So because one is less than one and one half, it's going to go just a little bit below one half on our number line. Because you can also think, well, if I were to break this number line into thirds, I would have zero, one third, two thirds, three thirds. You can kind of use that visual as well. Five, six is a little bit easier because our denominator is six. So half of six is three. So we know that five six is larger than one half, but it's still less than one. So five six would go about here on our number line. And then same thing with seven twelfths. So well, actually it's going to be a little bit closer to one because we would only need one more sixth to make one whole. And then seven twelfths, we do the same. So it's less than one because we don't have 12. Uh, half of 12 is six. So it's a little bit more than one half. So we would plot it here. So then when we have those plotted on our number line, I could ask you and say, well, seven twelfths, is that greater than, less than, or equal to one half? Well, we can see on our number line that it's past the one half. So that would make seven twelfths greater than one half. Same thing with five six. I could say is five six greater than less than or equal to one half because of where it falls on our number line, we would say it's more than greater than one half. And that's our next slide. So seven twelfths and one half. Seven twelfths, as we saw, is greater than one half. So when we come here, we're going to double click and we're going to put our greater than sign in the box to make that a true sentence. So seven twelfths is greater than one half. And then it's asking us seven twelfths and five six. So let's look back at our number line. Seven twelfths is less than five six because five six is closer to one whole. 7 twelfths is a little bit closer to 1 half. So because 5 six is further on our number line, 5 six is greater. 
So we're going to need 7 twelfths is less than 5 6 to finish that sentence. Okay. So we didn't really do any math. We used reasoning. We used our knowledge of numbers and our understanding of number lines and fractions to help us do this. Okay. All right. So let's look at this again. Um, so we have new fractions. So 11 twelfths, 1 fourth, and 3 eighths. These ones are nice because our denominator is even. So we can easily identify our 1 half with these fractions. You just take half of the denominator. So 12 1 half would be 6 twelfths. Force, 2 fourths would be equal to 1 half. And then that kind of helps you gauge where do they need to go on our number line. So let's look at our 11 twelfths. Well, how many twelfths do I need to make one whole? I need 12, and I'm one away from that. So 11 twelfths is going to be really close to our one whole. Okay, one fourth. Well, what is equal? What would be half of four? Two fourths would be half. So one fourth is less than one half. So it's going to go about right here. And then we have three eighths. Well, let's look at our denominator. Our denominator is eight. So half of eight is four, but I'm one less than that. So 3 eighths is going to be just a little bit less than 1 half. Okay. So then it says select two fractions from part A and use the given number line to compare them by writing greater than, less than, or equal to. So let's just take 11 twelfths and 1 fourth. So 1 fourth we know is less than 1 half. 11 twelfths is almost 1 whole. So we can say that 11 twelfths is larger, is greater than 1 fourth. That's, we can easily see that on our number line after we plot them. Okay, so I'm going to pop over to module 13, or less than 13. This is doing things really similar to what we were just doing, um, but if you notice, now on our number line we have 1 one and one half and two. So we just have different different benchmarks. Same process, right? Same reasoning with numbers, but now we're gonna work with larger fractions, okay? So we've talked about improper fractions a little bit. So if you look at four thirds, how many thirds do I need to make one whole? I need three and I have four of them. So I have a little bit more than one, but I don't have more than one and one half. Um, so four and one third would be just about there. Okay, now same here with 11 six. 11 six, I need six six to make one whole, and I have five extra. So one and one half, I would need <clears throat> six plus half of what I need to make one whole. So six plus nine, or excuse me, six plus three. So nine six would be equal to one and one half, right? So I need six to make one whole. Half of that is three. So six plus my three would give me one and one half. So nine six would be equal to one and one half. So I have 11. How many do I need to make two? Well, six, six make one. So if I were to double that, I would need 12, six to make two. And I have 11, six. So that's very close to two, right? So our 11, six is gonna go right about there. Okay, you guys with me? These ones are a little bit trickier than the ones that are just between zero and one because um, you really have to use your number knowledge, okay? So our last one is 17 twelfths. Look at our denominator. How many do we need to make one whole? I need 12. 12 twelfths to make one. What's half of 12? Six. 
So 12 plus 6 gives me 18 to make <clears throat> um, 1 and 1 half. That would be 1 and 1 half. So 18 twelfths would be 1 <clears throat> and 1 half. But I have 17. So 17 twelfths is going to be just a little bit less than 1 and 1 half. So we've got 4 thirds, which so just a little bit more than 1. 17 twelfths, just a little bit less than 1 and 1 half. And then 11 6 is almost 2. So then we can come over here, and it wants us to um, compare them. And they just wrote them differently. So 1 and 5 6. Look over here at our 6. So if I take 6 of those 11 away, and convert that into one whole. So this 11 minus six leaves me with five. So my 11 six can also be written as one and five six. Same with that one and five twelfths, 17 twelfths. So my 11 six is larger than 17 twelfths. So to finish this, we're gonna say one and five six is greater than one and five twelfths. One and one third, one and five twelfths. So we're looking at our thirds and our twelfths. Let's go back to our number line. My thirds is less than my twelfths. So we can pop back over here. One and one third is less than one and five twelfths. So I kind of wish they would have left this the same as here. Um, so four thirds. So they just took the thirds out that made one whole. So this one is equal to three thirds. Three plus one gives us that four thirds. So they can they um, rewrote it. This is called a mixed number because it has a whole number and a fraction. This is called an improper fraction because it's all fraction, but I have more than one whole. My numerator is larger than my denominator. So we'll get more into that later. <clears throat> um, let's just do, we'll do one more with these improper fractions and then we'll be done for today. So same thing. I have 11 eighths. I have more than one. Right, because if my numerator is larger than my denominator, I have more than one. So it takes eight to make one whole. Eight, and I have three more. What is half of eight? Four. So eight plus four would be 12. So 12 eighths would be one and one half. Eight to make one whole, half of that is four. So I would need 12 to make one and one half. So my 11 eighths is gonna be just a little bit less than one and one half, okay? Seven fourths, I need four to make one whole. So I have more than one. Half of four is two. So six would be one and one half. And I have a little bit more, I have seven fourths. So seven fourths is gonna be a little bit larger than one and one half. Okay. And then we have 15 twelfths. Look at our denominator, 12. So I need 12 of those to make one whole was half of 12. Half of 12 is six. 12 plus six gives me 18. So I would need 18 twelfths to be one and one half, but I have 15 twelfths. So 15 twelfths is gonna be less than one and one half. So I'm gonna plot it just about there, okay? So you could look at that and say, well, 15 twelfths, I need three more to make one and one half. 11 eighths, I only needed one more to make one and one half. So 11 eighths is just a little bit smaller than 15 twelfths. And 7 fourths is larger than one and one half. So 7 fourths would be greater than 11 eighths and 15 twelfths. Okay. Lots of numbers thrown at you. Um, 
Don't worry though, this is just the beginning of this comparing and we'll continue to work with it. And when you guys do your problems that I ask you on the Ed puzzle, make sure you guys are drawing the number line out using your reasoning, your number sense to help you plot those on the number line before you compare. Okay. All right, you guys, great job today. We'll see you guys soon.